What is a wet bulb temperature? We're all warm blooded and so we produce heat in our bodies and we have to lose that through our skin. So the wet bulb temperature is sort of a theoretical maximum for uh, how much you could possibly cool your body. It tells you the temperature that your skin would reach if it was sweating as much as it possibly could. So it's kind of like you took a regular old thermometer with mercury in it, and then you put it in a wet sock, and then you just swung it around your head for a long time until as much of the water as can evaporate from that wet sock has evaporated into the air. And then the temperature of that thermometer will be what we would call the wet bulb temperature. In, in a lot of settings, including uh, in military settings or in athletic settings, the standard for stopping work or reducing work due to heat stress is actually wet bulb globe temperature. The wet bulb globe temperature includes a couple of different things. It includes regular temperature, dry bulb temperature, wet bulb temperature that I just talked about, and also the input of solar radiation, sunlight. The wet bulb globe temperature ends up being a really, really important one for practical considerations like deciding people simply can't do football practice today. We've known for a long time that there is a, a threshold wet bulb temperature beyond which human beings have a, a hard time continuing to live and work. We are just approaching the point where places on Earth for short periods of time will reach those thresholds for people. But as the world warms by several more degrees, more than three degrees, more and more of the world hits that threshold and stays above it for sustained periods of time. And that's really bad because that means that even if you're fit and you're acclimated and you're used to the heat, there's simply not a good way for you to continue to be able to function and do work unless you're in an air-conditioned or otherwise um, you know, climate-adjusted environment. <laughs>